start with Bruce Shane, and today we're going to take a look at the angle of repos. Now, if you've ever tried to pile any type of material up, you'll notice you can't get it too high before it starts to flatten itself out. Well, that's what we want to take a look at. Now, we can start this by pouring some sand onto a tray. And you'll notice that as the pile gets bigger and bigger, the shape of the cone actually pretty much stays the same. Now, I've built a couple of devices that make it a little bit more convenient so you're not getting sand all over the place. In this case, it's a wooden box that's divided in half with this bar. The bar has holes in it. It allows uh, me to vary one hole to two holes up to six holes. And that way, I can see the interaction of the sand as it's piling up at the bottom or draining up at the top. There is a base for it that makes it a little bit more stable for when it's standing upright. There it is. I'll turn it over and let's see what happens. I'll speed the video up by a factor of 20, otherwise it would take about 5 minutes for the sand to drain. Now the part I find interesting, I like to call the stick and slide. The sand clumps together because of friction until it becomes too steep and then it will slide towards the bottom. In a way, it's like a tiny avalanche. Now this behavior acts both on the pile or cone and also on the dip part where the sand is leaving. If we measure the angle where this occurs, that would be the angle of repose. That's where the sand becomes stable. And in this case, it's about 34 degrees. Now, if I want to change the number of holes, the first thing I have to do is remove all the screws. The screws are out. Let's take the plastic off. And here we can see the holes that are either open or covered. Now, let's try it again with two holes, this time at either end. And we're going to speed this up once again 20 times. We see the same type of behavior again, only now we see the pile at the top and the dip at the bottom. It almost seems that if we could turn that pile upside down, it would fit perfectly into that dip. We're going to try this once more, only this time I'm going to set it up with three holes. With more holes, we see the piles become very symmetrical. Now, here's the other piece I made for demonstrating this. Two identical bottles. The one's filled with sand. The other one's empty. The lid has been bolted together and taped together. There are five holes. There we go. We can see them on that side. Now, if I don't want to use all the holes, I simply take a piece of tape, cover the hole I don't want. There we go. Screw it back onto one of the bottles, and then add the second bottle, screw that on. So here it is ready to go. All I have to do is turn it upside down. Now once again I've speeded up the action here, but what I like about the bottles is it allows us to see the three-dimensional interaction of the piles rather than just a two-dimension. Now what we're seeing on a small scale, we can also see on a much larger scale. Notice the similarities between here and here, and even here. This process helps to determine the shape of our mountains, where it can help small insects capture their prey. In fact, the design of many of our machines is actually based on the behavior of matter. 